Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Sabrina Salas Matsnani, and I'm in the driver's seat for this episode of Cruising with KUAM. And I am so excited because I get to interview the lovely Arlene Steffi. Many of you may remember her from her days in radio, but she's doing big things now, even bigger things. She's producing documentaries about the island's history and culture. So, over the next 30 minutes, I'm so excited to share her story with all of you. So, buckle up and enjoy the ride. I'm so glad I finally get to sit down and interview with you. I know we had some scheduling issues at the beginning, but I'm so happy. I know. So I'm very happy too that, <laughs> that it's you and me. I know. So, beginning to end, right? Right. Yeah. And I want to start actually in the beginning because some people, I was mentioning in the intro about how you started out, um, it, you know, before you started doing your documentaries, you were doing, um, you were in the media, you were doing uh, radio and investigative journalism, and I always used to listen to you, yeah. and so that's why I was just so happy to be able to sit down and interview. But, you know, you, you and I have history, but we've never really worked together, right? right? Mm -hmm. So, I, um, it's, Guam is so small, and the media is competitive, yeah. but you only have so many stories in the day, right? <laughs> And uh, being in management, uh, media management before, of course, salesperson, uh, and then became sales manager for two radio stations and television stations. I understand the business side of it. I understand the who turns the lights on. Yeah. But the consumer wants the news. Yeah. The consumer wants to know what's happening out there because they go about their everyday lives and they don't have the focus that you have. You know, you're sitting there and the, the news team goes out and it has to ask what's going on in the government, it has to ask what's going on in the community, and we have a very dynamic uh, community. We, um, Guam has a certain speed. Yeah, you yeah. drive 35 miles an hour, maybe, but Guam is like a 100 <laughs> miles an hour and it's going all over. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's so right. there is a challenge of, of dissecting and choosing what you're gonna run and then having to prioritize, prioritize that as to what's number one, what, what are you gonna lead with, right? So I've always interacted with the news department, but I, I didn't get into the news aspect of it until later on in my career. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of sorry I didn't do that, and then <laughs> I didn't realize how much I really enjoyed the journalism aspect of my mass comm background until John Anderson said, would you like to do investigative reporting? And I thought, huh? <laughs> You have five people in the newsroom and you want me to do investigative reporting, why? Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of that is constitution. You know, I mean, you've been in the news, you've never been on the other side of the business, right? Right. And you know that being in the news, there's a, there's a, there's a separation. You almost have to have a wall around you because you cannot be part of the news. You have to be impartial of what you're reporting. Mm -hmm. And in, in investigative reporting, you're in it. Yeah. You're in the story. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, hmm, okay. But I love challenge. So I took it and wow, Sabrina, that was my calling. You know, that that was like, whoa, how come I didn't do this earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it was exhilarating. Every aspect of it was just exhilarating mm -hmm. from the from the examination of documents, from the studying of a, and of course I wanted to be a lawyer, and I thought, oh, this is the closest I'm gonna get to right. this, right? So yeah, I really had a good time. After a long career on the air, Arlene continued to tell stories, but through documentaries about the island's history and culture. Stay tuned, Cruising with KUAM continues after the break. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. After a successful career in the local media, Arlene was still writing and producing, but in a different capacity. So how did that, I guess, um, lead you to what you're doing um, now? 
I'm not sure that it had anything to do. The investigative part of it was a feature of my role as a talk show host at K57, which I believe was is my is is so much me. Um, talk radio is so powerful, um, and when you know when I when John asked me to do that, that was just a, a, an aside to what I was doing. But I think the interviewing process I honed in as a talk show host. Mm -hmm. And then Joshua Tenorio, who was the president at, uh, of the board uh, at CAHA, yes. and a few of their board members wanted somebody to collect oral history for the Manamku on the memorial, uh, memorializing the Meningan March and yes. concentration camp. And they, they all agreed. The only one that, that really could do that was me. Um, I believe partly because I speak tomorrow, yeah. you know. And and I was, and they listened to the interviews. They would listen to the interviews and be all hanging at the edge. And it's like, well, where's where's this gonna go? Is she gonna ask that question? What is important in our community is because we're a small community. We kind of know each other's stories, but we don't really know each other. And so there are nuances about that story that that you might not know and I might not know, but if you speak to the person, all of a sudden you get this broad picture of really what was going on. You go, really? That's what happened? That's not what I understood. And that's because we're peripheral, we're on the outside. But um, they they would reveal these things and finally, you know, I mean, Josh pursued me maybe two years. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to do that, you know? Because I understood that I'm going to be walking around with the baggage once I take it I can't get that back I absorb it because it's a first-hand delivery many of these manamku wouldn't even talk to their family members you know about what happened to them very degrading circumstances very deplorable situations that they found themselves into or found themselves in matter of fact I remember um, you had spoke before the rotary and I believe it was about one of your documentaries um, well massacre site Right. It's coming out in July. See, oh my gosh, when you were just speaking to everybody, I could feel like how it affected you. Mm -hmm. A lot of people cried. Yeah. And when you guys played that over and over, at first I went, whoa, that, I thought that was just for the news. But then I, I understood that it really was okay to do that because it was kind of preparing the community for what's coming. Yeah. You know, so thank you for doing that. I don't know if that was intentional, but it the, the exposure um, prepared them. The Guam Massacre Side documentary is is very uh, is I think uh, deeper than the massacre the Menengan because Menengan is a a collective experience individual uh, made up of individual stories. But the Guam Massacre Side was personal. Yeah. It's somebody's being beheaded. Yeah. Someone crawling out of a a, a partially covered grave, yeah. you know, um, hiding in a what no no Jesus. It's really, yeah. you know, um, witnessing. Even though it's a hand down, witnessing the moment that the mother was shot in a jitney, and and fifteen other people slaughtered, and a man climbing up the East Agania cliff line by the Calvo compound. Sabrina, when I when I first heard that story, every time I pass that section, I look at it and think, how on earth did he climb that? Right. The amount of adrenaline, the, the sheer panic that you have to have to know that the only way you're gonna survive is to, is to scale that hill, that cliff, he did it. And he became, he, he was the father of one of the Essen mayors. And it's just, we have yet to absorb what happened and and I'm grateful for the fact that I get to do this work because we hear about it in one sense but to live it to experience what you experience in it's shocking you it's still alive it's still there it's still raw and um, wow what a privilege to be able to, com to complete it although I have to say that there were many PTS moments for me. Up next, Arlene on Faith and Family. 
Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Yeah, I was going to ask, how do you come back from that? You know, it, it just seems so emotional to go through it. It's almost like when they share their story with you, you cut, you're, you're there, right? I'm the sponge. <laughs> I have to suck it up, and I have to walk away with it, and then I have to process it, and then I have to present it. And um, my husband, Bob, was very concerned about it in the very beginning because, you know me, I don't know anything about balance. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you gotta do this R, and it's like, okay, I go from, <laughs> I go from sitting to a march, you know, and then a run. <laughs> and I don't break that run. And, and it's exhausting for everyone who, who's around me because it's like, if I'm not doing it, I, once I'm fixated on it, it's like once my GPS is aimed at that, mm -hmm. it's gone. Yeah. Yeah, and nothing, I mean, don't get in my way because you're going to get plowed over. Right. <laughs> you know, I got to <laughs> get over there. You get it? The mountain is mine. <laughs> right. And uh, there's a huge cost for that. Mm -hmm. There's a huge cost for that. What I get my balance from is I have a very loving and supportive husband. I mean, I, he's invaluable, Sabrina. He... He, um, it, nothing would be possible without Bob. I, I have to, I, I mean, that's not an understatement. I know that there are other wonderful husbands. You have one and he has to be there for you. You can't do your work without that support. But with Bob, he, I think he gets excited that I'm doing, I think he just thrives at what I'm accomplishing. And, yeah. and you know, he, he, he likes that. Um, of course, my faith is another one. Being a Jehovah's Witness, I'm very grounded. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I, you know, meetings for me are everything because it's God talking to me at that, from that podium, and it's reminding me of the things that really matter in life, and that these things are situational. These things are temporary. These, uh, these things that happen to us in this life because of imperfection, are are a curse of punishment. And it's not because you did something wrong, it's because you've inherited imperfection. And until he can once again balance things out, mm -hmm. we're, we're left to our own devices. And our mistakes are made because we're imperfect. And that compounds, right? Mm -hmm. One imperfect decision creates another imperfect decision and you have this roller coaster. <laughs> so I, I ground on that. I ground on the fact that this is all temporary. And I ground on the fact that even if I was to die in this system, but that there will be a redemption. There will be a time when all this will not be. And and I can't wait to not remember it. Yeah, right? <laughs> I can, that I can't wait. I can't wait to not remember this. But meanwhile, I am a conduit. That's the way I see myself. You know, it's kind of like you have a computer and then you have this external drive. Mm -hmm. And I'm that cord. Yeah. That's all I am. I'm just a cord that takes this story and moves it to the computer and then you can see it in the monitor. Mm -hmm. End of story. <laughs> but you can't see it without that cord. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know why, I, I asked myself, why didn't other people do this before? Yeah. You know, why, I mean, I, I'm a kid in the block here. <laughs> why, why me? I'm glad me. Yeah, I'm glad you too. I'm glad me. <laughs> Let's talk about the DVD that you're going to be launching in a couple of days. Uh, uh, Tanata Marianne's. Season one and two. Two, right. Yeah, thanks to you. Thanks to me. <laughs> it was your idea. You don't remember this? Yes, I do. I've been told, but I, you know. It's your idea. <laughs> I just happen to have the material. I do not forget that. If it wasn't for you bringing it up, Sabrina, we wouldn't be in the third season. <laughs> this would have been eclipsed. I mean, people need to remember how things happen. I cannot forget that, nor can I forget that Joshua ever asked me to do it. Because I, it was there, it was your appreciation for what I do, know, knowing what I have, and I would like to think that you, it's because you know that I'm gonna do something worthwhile, right? You did a great job. Yeah. yeah, and so it's your idea. So your idea now is in its third season. 
and it, it covers the history of the Marianas, the peopling of the Marianas, uh, Itinauta Marianas, that's what it means, to tautau the Marianas, right? To fill, mm -hmm. to populate. When the Mariana Islands were discovered uh, through the European contact with Magellan on his route, his goal to circumnavigate the world, mm -hmm. he stopped by. And of course, that was the first recordation of it. Now that, that mission made it back to Spain without Magellan. Of course, he died in, in Spain, I mean, in the Philippines. But the, the, the one ship of the, of the uh, expedition made it back. And so it proved that the world wasn't flat at that time. They yeah. believed that if they went to the horizon, they'd fall, right? <laughs> or that the earth was somehow being uh, uh, riding on the back of a turtle. Um, but, you know, that being, that said, uh, it goes from 1521 all the way to 1898. That's significant contribution to Guam's history in three DVD sets of 13, 12 episodes each and a overview. The first one, of course, was with uh, with a, um, Jason Salas and then the second one with Laura Souter. Yeah. And so we will finish uh, the third season in September of this year and then do the overview in October and then send it to print in November mm -hmm. and so we'll have it back by the end of November early December and then the project will be complete. The Eat and Out Town Marianas History DVD series are on sale now at Two Lovers Point. Stay tuned because up next Arlene gives us a sneak peek of her upcoming project. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. A successful career in the media, oral historian and ethnographer for the University of Guam's Micronesia Area Research Center, producer, writer, does Arlene ever take a break? Nope. You got tomorrow books coming out? Yeah, didn't I tell you? No. Oh, well, then I guess I'm going to break it on your show. Wow. Yeah, um, actually, I've, I've spoken about it a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, Rosa Palomo conducted this Rosa. workshop, okay, a, uh, Indigenous Writers Workshop mm -hmm. during Festback. Okay, and you know she's a very good, close friend of mine. And I said, you know, would you like me to come down and I'll document what you're doing? Sure, appreciate it. Well, she roped us in at the end of that. I was there just to document, and she goes, okay, I expect to book out of you. And she said to Loling, I expect to book out of uh, uh, you. And I went. Oh boy, and then she <laughs> and then she said, "I got your moral book, Arlene." And I thought, "I'm, I'm there, you know." There what? And, and, oh yeah, there I go again, right? <laughs> she opened the door for me, <laughs> and so I, I thought about it for a while, and I, I, I thought, you know, one of the things that I remember growing up, my children are never going to experience. For example, the houses on Guam used to have papasangi. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? Uh, no. Uh, see. <laughs> So no. <laughs> I, every, both my grandmothers had wooden homes and they had papasagis and they stored things underneath. One papasagi was covered, the other papasagi was open. Like a hole? No, no, it's no. just the under, under floor, the understory of the house. And they put, you know, like um, all the implements, the, the tools and storage and things like that. Mm -hmm. But in my grandmother in Chalampago, the country, I grew up in the city in Tumuning, <laughs> running water inside and everything and get to Chalapago and there's chickens and dogs and pigs and cows and it's like, oh, and, and an outhouse. <laughs> <laughs> so in the Papasadgi, she had what they call kulekas or chickens that laid eggs. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of wild ones that would, you know, kind of roost underneath, but those five or six, those were hers. They knew that that was their station and their job was to lay an egg every day. That's it. And she got, and she loved to fala, is to eat raw. She would eat the raw eggs. Oh, it's it's cultural, believe me, because at that time there were no vitamins for us, and they believed that when you eat the raw eggs, it was a stuncha, right? Like a uh, supplement uh -huh. for especially for teenage girls who are coming into, uh -huh. you know, uh, having their period. Um, 
and and they're gonna be moms. They're you know they're gonna so you start feeding them this thing and oh I hated it. <laughs> I was, no, this is not real. There's no way. Why do you eat eggs like this? My cousins on the other hand loved it. Oh, so I would like. Mm. And when I would go down there, I. I had the pleasure of collecting those eggs and they would dink with me and it because I was squeamish about sticking my hand under that chicken. They were warm and mm. and they of course, you know, you try sticking your hand under somebody, they're not gonna be <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You know, so it really oh it was bad. And so I figured, you know, maybe if I just scare them, if I just took a broom and just ran like a nut in they would like all oh, move and then I could get the eggs. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't realize they would articulate what they were doing too. Ah. So they would scream, kick -a -kick -a -kick -a -kick -a <laughs> <laughs> and Nana would go, Arlene, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, collecting the eggs? Oh, no, God. what are you doing? <laughs> That's where I learned there's a difference between how to answer, ask a question. Mm -hmm. And I said, I got to get the eggs. And she said, why are the chickens yelling? Uh... <laughs> you are the real deal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> because I chased them away. So when I came upstairs, she said, what did you do? And I told him, I said, I took the broom, I mean the mop, and I ran in front of them. Of course, I didn't make noise. I just ran, and they—they they must have thought that was like a scarecrow or something, <laughs> because they went. Tuk -tuk 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 -tuk. <laughs> it achieved my purpose. I collected the eggs and took it upstairs. Oh my gosh! I <laughs> so, thank you. So cultural stories thirteen coming mm -hmm. up. What when? Again? Uh, well, one is just about ready to go. These cultural stories, others can relate to them as well because they have the same story. Yeah. Your generation and the generation beneath you are not going to know that if we don't have these materials. And this is why these books are important to publish. We need to publish literature in our language, in Chamorro, to pass it down, to encourage people to speak, to pass the story, because that's who we are. So that's what we're doing. Thank you. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com.